Hello YouTube and welcome to another Virtual Worlds tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to be covering the basics of terrain creation as well as terrain manipulation and painting foliage onto our terrain with free assets from the marketplace created by Epic Games themselves. Ok let's get started. First thing you want to come and do is get some free assets for the foliage. So what I recommend you do is open Epic Launcher and by default you'll be in the Unreal Engine up here with the TAM. Click on Marketplace. When it loads up, click in your search and type in Open Space World. Then it should bring down a drop down. Oh no, I just put World and it's already recognised it, but I spelled it wrong. Click on, then it should come up with Open World Demo Collection. Click on that, it'll bring up one result. And as you can see, it's Open World Demo Collection. It's been rated nearly five stars. I already own it and it's free so what you want to do is click on that then it should take you to this page where it says add to cart mine says add to project because i've already downloaded it you add to cart you click on cart then it'll be in your project files you no need to pay for it or any credit card required because it's free then you click add to project and then whatever project you want it uh the footage to be associated with you go ahead and double click that it's compatible with most versions of unreal engine 4. my my file will be back from the dead. I've already got it installed, so I don't need to bother installing it. So we'll close that down. And then come to your Unreal Engine, load up a new project, create a new project, sorry. So we'll go to create new level and choose default. You can go ahead and create an empty level, but you'll have to do the lighting yourself. It's just quicker to choose a default level. Go ahead and click the mesh, delete that. And then what you want to do, we'll create our basic terrain. Click on terrain, landscape in the modes tab, and then you've got two options, create new and import from file. We're going to be using create new, because import from file, you import a height map and it will render that instead. But we haven't got a height map in this tutorial, and I already have another tutorial covering height maps with a free download of a height map. Go ahead and check that out if you want to use height maps. In this tutorial, we're going to be creating a new terrain, so we click on new, make sure material is left unchecked, and your location. Z and Y axis should be default value to zero with a Z on 100. Your rotation should be X, Y and Z at zero and your scale should be Z, uh, default to on the X, Y and Z value at 100. Go ahead and leave the scale value alone. Don't touch that because it can cause awful terrain artifacts. If you don't know what you're doing, leave scale as it is. Then section size, you're going to want to click on this and choose 127 by 127 quads. 2x2 two two sections for sections per component, number of components 16x16, 16 16. then you should have an overall resolution of 4065x4065, 4065. total components 256, that's quite optimising, it should be quite a large level to work with, and make sure you're under the managed, if you don't see this screen, make sure you're under the managed tab up here under the landscape, then click create new, you can see this grid here, that's where our terrain is going to go, and you can see the number of components here, the squares and whatnot. Just click create, give it a few seconds to load in, there you go, that's our terrain, it's quite a big area as you can see, don't worry about the black lines in, in squares around the terrain, that's just because just I haven't built lighting, what you can do if you want to get rid of that, just go to build, click build lighting only, I can't do that because I've got I've set my lighting to like propagation volume dynamic lighting and you don't build that it's already pre-computed but if you're baking UVs and light maps in, into your game you can go ahead and click build lighting and the black lines will disappear I always have to bear with it now because I can't build lighting because I've got light propagation volume and then what you want to do make sure you've got your landscape selected and then you've got you've got manage if you click on manage you can clear component selection change your overall brush size and your selection tool for add for selecting objects, adding, deleting, move to level. Usually you don't want to come in there. Edit splines is very useful. If you've got spline assets like rows that you can make bend around corners and whatnot and edit them along the trajectory point. But we're not going to be covering that. But make sure you're in sculpt. And then you've got sculpt tool. If you've got sculpt tool sculpt tool by default allows you to create bumps and allows you to create bumps and dips smooth will smooth the terrain 
flatten or flatten it, then you've got a ramp, erosion, hydro erosion, add noise to your level, and just don't worry about the rest. The ones you're going to want mainly use is sculpt, smooth, and flatten, with a little bit of erosion if you're doing mountains. Go ahead and leave it on smooth. That's not actually going to be smooth. If you want smooth terrain, you've got to click on the sculpt and click on smooth. And then what you should have is uh, your tool strength. That's the higher the number, one's the maximum. That, are, that, that means how much of the effect to be applied to the brush. One being maximum, which means like full effect. If you don't, if you're finding, I'll show you in just a second. Brush size, obviously, how big the brush is. The maximum is 8192, as you can see, it's the biggest you can get. The brush fall off is uh, if we if we shrink it down to zero, you can see it's got no fall off. If you got to one, the maximum, you've got plenty of fall off. What fall off does is allows a nice transition between your sculpting. If you're painting terrain and you're painting layers, what it would do is it blend uh, two layers or three layers, whatever how many levels you're covering. Uh, a lot more nicely you won't have such a hard edge between joining textures so we'll go ahead and set our brush size say something like 2300 and our brush fall off we don't want it to affect too much so we don't want to make massive terrain we just want to make some small hills we'll go ahead and say it on 3 3.8 or something leave use clay brush alone and now since we're on sculpt if we go ahead and click left click we can see it getting bigger and bigger and if we hold shift it will it will dip the terrain it will go in so shift is to go make create dips and holes in the terrain and without shift it will create hills that's on on the sculpt tool and what you can do if uh you can click that and click smooth and as you can see it's now smoothing those hard edges that the sculpt tool created so it's creating a more natural a more natural look so you can see we've still got the dip if we go up quite close but now it looks like you would see in real life you wouldn't you, it wouldn't look like this and if you do it to your terrain see it's obviously if you think that's affecting it too much like it uh, the smoothings applied too much and it's shrinking it down way too much you click the tool strength we've got a maximum of one so if we click it on a very small amount now when we click on it you can see it's having less of an effect. That's the basics of terrain manipulation. We can do smooth and erosion. Say these were your mountains. Then you click on that. Can you see what it does there? It gives a nice angular definition that mountains have. And when you combine it with layers, like a mountain rock texture, it'll look pretty good. So you can just keep doing that to your heart's content. But we're not going to be covering layering terrain today. Because I already have another tutorial for that, so go ahead and watch that if you if you want to know how to paint terrain. That's the basics of terrain manipulation. There's not too much to it, and it's quite easy to use. It's very intuitive. If you did have layers, you click on paint, and it appear down here when you set it up properly. Go ahead and watch my other tutorial on uh, terrain in the UE4 playlist if you want to learn how to paint layers. The video is about 33 minutes long. All right, now the fun part, foliage. What we can do to set up your foliage, click on this tab up here, uh, foliage, click on that. And then what you've got, you've got your brush size, which is obviously your raw brush size for everything. Your paint density, all do that on one. That'll, if you've got four foliages set up and you've got all four selected, that's the overall paint density for all four of them or how many you've got selected I always leave it on one by default and change the properties on the individual mesh for paint density I always leave the, the overall paint density on one it just works out better that way and the raised density is how much it'll, how strong the arrays will be when you hold shift and you click on arrays then what you want to do is locate the assets you download from marketplace by epic games and it should be called kite demo click on kite demo down here in your content browser and to get access easily to all static meshes and we only, we only want to see static meshes click on your filters tab and we'll filter for static mesh click on static mesh and as you can see 
in the root directory with tight demo, you select and select tight mesh, it'll, it'll only show the static meshes from all the folders inside kite demo so we've got all the static meshes here and we, we're not bothered with lots of textures or materials and other files cluttering up the place all we, so all we've got now is static meshes so that's really good so we, it's a lot easier to find go ahead and choose any of these but what I will do for demonstration purposes is I'll go ahead and I'll choose the Scots Pine click that and drag with left mouse button into foliage type up here it should go yellow to show it just so you can drop it there and then go ahead and choose a boulder drop that in there whichever one you want we'll have a fern drop that in there and we'll have the grass and we'll drop that in there as you can see if you highlight them we've all got a little tick in the checkbox that means if you're painting it's, it's going to put down whatever static mesh is ticked we only want the grass for now so we'll uncheck the fern the rock and the tree go ahead and click on grass that will bring down the options for that mesh the foliage type leave this alone where it says mesh because that's the one you selected we don't need to take no notes of that and when you come down to painting density is how many instances there will be created of black mesh in the given brush size so the higher the density the more instances you'll have radius is basically how many instances of that mesh how far apart they'll be so if we had zero there'll be and a hundred that'll be quite a lot of grass and there'll be each instance of a grass material will be quite close together if you had it on a hundred they'd be spaced out by a hundred units or it'd be, it'd be quite some distance so it wouldn't be too much for grass but a thousand is the maximum so density we probably want to set on something like We'll try 50 so we can see it. Radius we'll have on say 25. Leave the scale in uniform alone. Then scale X, min and max values. One is if you leave it on one, it'll uh, it'll place your static mesh according to its actual size as the static mesh. So what you want to do, what minimum it'll randomate when you put in grass down if you put 0.5 it'll range between half the size to 1.5 to one and a half times the size it'll place different grass instances down between 0.5 to 1.5 it'll randomate it so you'll have grass textures ranging from half the size to one and a half times the size it just gives a bit of variety because obviously grass isn't all the same size it just has more variety to your level and it'll be less obvious that it's the same mesh repeating leave vertex color by mass channel alone you don't really want to set too much under placement leave the z offset alone make sure it's zero zero otherwise you'll get meshes floating in the air and whatnot have a line to normal checked align max angle on zero random your leave that checked if you want i recommend you leave that checked because what i'll do when it's putting down instances of the mesh you've selected it'll randomate it'll rotate it'll randomate the mesh according to your value which means it'll there'll all be random rotations they'll be different randomly rotated which is what we want because obviously trees aren't all in the same direction sorry grass grass trees whatever mesh you got aren't all in the same direction random pitch angle leave that alone on zero ground slope angle make sure the min is on zero and the max on 45 that means basically that if you've got like a slope going down the hill and you add a tree and you paint on that it, it would actually appear unless the, the degree of the slope was more than 45 degrees so if you set it on 90 and you had a hard straight drop on your terrain that means it paint the tree right on the side if you clicked paint on that surface which is look unbelievable tree sticking out of the side so the fault value is fine 45 degrees is the max we want to go for um, painting uh, meshes leave the heart height on default it should be some weird random minus number and max number leave it as it is otherwise it might not render prop it might not show up if you start changing that value mobility leave it on static cold distance well it does you've got min and max values usually I like to set my cold distance for this for the meshes with the with a volume occlusion I've got another tutorial on that on my um, YouTube channel if you want to go check that out. But if you don't want to use a clues and volume for your meshes, what you can do is set them into zero and set the max to something like, I don't know, 
15,000. Basically what it'll do when it gets a certain distance away, it won't render the object, it won't render grass anymore. So freeing up system resources, because when you're not near it, you don't need to see it and it doesn't need to be rendered. So go ahead and set that to 15,000 for now for demonstration purposes. You've got cache shadow. You can have that check, but I wouldn't bother because you can have quite a lot of instances of grass. You don't want them all to cache shadow because it will severely slow down your game when you've got like a million grass instances. So take on tick shadow for grass, which is not necessary. You don't need grass to cast shadows. Then all these options become grayed out. Then on the collision presets, uh, <coughs> this is the collision type. Since it's grass and glass doesn't block your way in real life, we want to be able to walk through the grass. We make sure that's select no collision, which it is by default. If you click custom, these options become highlighted. And you can check all these different options like uh, the pawn, the world dynamic, the camera, the visibility, the physics body, the and whatnot, you can check, you can set them all individually to whether it should be ignore it, overlap, or block. But you, normally, you just want to go on all of the, the glass, grass is fine on no collision, it'll do it all for you, and it'll set the properties accordingly to no collision. Leave custom nav navigatable geometry alone, cache shadow is two sided, that's fine to leave that alone. Receive decals, decal, say a, a bullet hole when you shoot a gun as a decal, um, so we don't want grass having bullet holes in them because the texture it'd just be all wrong the textures wouldn't really apply to the grass they'll be sticking out all over the place and it'd just be really jarring so leave the cows alone for grass if it was a tree or a rock you'd want that checked light map type i'm using a light propagation volume so i'd want to check force for i'd want to check force volumetric but if you're using uh uv light maps which most people do when they bake their light in, you want force surface so I'll put on force volumetric because I'm using light propagation, dynamic lights. And then if you want, up here where we set the um, the occlusion between min 0 and max 1500, if you want that, if it's not taking effect and you can't see it disappearing when you get when you get so far away from it, that's because user occluder isn't checked by default. You want use it as a occluder and that will make sure it rent, uh, uses the occlusion uh, scale. Leave channel lighting channels alone and render custom death paths alone. You don't need that. You don't need physics material and scalability. Where it says able, enable density scaling, if you've got uh, meshes that aren't that important to the game and that's small and have no collision like grass, ferns, plants, like that, go ahead and check that. But if you had detailed meshes like trees, you photos like trees and whatnot, you want to go ahead and disable that. There you go. Now we've set the properties for grass. We can. Uh, we'll just make the brush size a little bit bigger, about 2,500. Now what we're we'll gonna do is we'll see what we get now when we after setting the options for grass. Can you see? It's I'm quite high up in the air. So if we get down, to, get down to the ground, you can see we've now got grass. If we get if we get further away from it, it should all disappear because we set the core volume. See it disappearing? It's no longer rendering. Go ahead and play with the core vo distance volume. Uh, sorry, go ahead and play with the core distance scales to get a, a look that you want. Because in the end, if you've got a large terrain, you probably will be having a couple of million instances of grass if you've got it, grass everywhere in your level. So you're going to want to set the coal the coal distance either under the settings on your foliage type or using a an occlusion volume under the volumes tab that I've got another tutorial for that so I won't cover it here then what you want to do is we'll click on tree now we'll set up the properties for tree we'll just uncheck grass and where on grass where it says 3.27k it tells you how many instances of grass you've got laid out on your terrain so we've got 3,270 uh, 3, instances of grass. We'll uncheck that because we just want to paint the tree singly for a minute. And then click on it so we've got the options. And then we do that again. And, uh, we'll set the individual options for the tree. Don't worry about the mesh. Painting, we'll have density on say uh, 0 0.1 and the radius on 1,000 which is a maximum 
but leave uniform alone for scaling. The scale X and min and max, that's the, that's the range how much it will randomate the different sizes again, like I said for the grass. So we probably want 0.8, no we probably want 0.9 for the minimum, and for the maximum 1.4. And we leave placement alone, make sure yours looks like this, the Z offsets on zero, the aligns normal is on, the align max angles on zero, the random yaw for random rotation is on, because trees aren't all the same direction or all the same size, and make sure the rest looks like that. Make sure the military is on static, and call distance volume, we, have, we shall have 25,000 this time, this means when we place down the trees, when we move away from them, the grass will, well I'll tell you what, that's not, we want the trees to disappear first, so we'll set that to, we'll set that to uh, 7,000, set to 9,000 so when you're moving away and everything starts occluding the trees will disappear before the grass usually you probably want to keep it on the same so we should set it to 15,000 really which is what we'll do and then we want trees to cast shadows because they're a big prop a big mesh and we want trees to cast shadows because it'll look better if you've got um like I have, like propagation, you can you can use as long as cash shadows enabled, you can use effect dynamic indirect lighting, and it says controls whether the foliage should inject light into the light propagation volume. This flag is only used if cash shadows is true. You can only use that if you've got light propagation for your dyna uh, dynamic lights in your level, and cash shadow is true. Same for effect field light. Uh, and where it says cast dynamic shadow and cast static shadow, if you're using UVs baking into your light maps, you want to use you want to uncheck dynamic shadow and leave cast static shadow. If you've got light propagation volume, you want to make sure you haven't got cast static shadow selected, and the one you have got selected is cast dynamic shadow. But if you are using light maps and you have got this one selected, then you can click on light map resolution. And since trees are quite got lots of triangles like 60,000 triangles per, you know, sorry, 60,000 triangles on the polygons, you probably going to want to set to the lowest at four, so the computer works less hard, so you get a better frame rate in the end of the day, it's worth, you know, you're freeing up some resources. It doesn't make that much difference from eight to four, apart from you'll notice a significant increase in performance if when you've got like hundreds of trees. So make sure, make sure if you're using bait maps, you like map resolutions on four, which is the minimum. I'm going to go ahead and click back on cast dynamic shadow, turn that one off. Right, collision preset. Since this is a tree, and we want to block our path and bullets if we have guns and cars and whatnot. You want to check on new collision and make sure it's on block all because we want our tree to have collision. That's fine. Then leave that alone. We can leave all this, but I'm going to use my light type as force volumetric because I'm using the light propagation. If you're using bait UVs, you'd want force surface. So I'll put force volumetric, leave the lighting channels alone and the re render custom death pass. Leave physics alone and engine scalability. We want this unchecked <coughs> because it's a large detailed mesh and it's quite important to the game. Now if we go ahead, make sure it's selected or it won't paint anything down. It paints down whatever is checked in the individual uh, foliage type. So if I was to check all four, it would paint all four down according to individual properties that you've set, leaving paint density on one. But we only want the tree for now, so we'll go ahead and make sure that's selected. And we'll just see that. Look, the trees are different sizes, they're rotated, and they're rotated differently because we've set the min and max scale value under scale X, and we've left the random your pitch selected. That's why we've got slightly different sized trees and different rotations for the trees. So we'll put some more trees over there and over here and just there and maybe here. <coughs> now what we'll do, I'll just quickly go ahead and uncheck the trees. We'll click on rock, make sure that's hard. Go ahead and set up the properties. We'll scroll down to, we we'll want quite a big rock and we don't really want to uh, randomate the size at the moment. We'll put 5 and 5, so it'll be 5 times as big and it'll be one size because we've got the min and the max equal the same. And then, cold distance, we'll have it on 15,000 at the max. 
if I cast shadows on or turn static shadows off I have collision on block or it's a rock and I want to block the player if it makes sure it has collision that's into set its density we'll have it on 1 and radius on 750 go ahead and put that down it's still far too many that'll be fine now we've got 40 instances of the rock now we'll set up our fern, last thing to do and then we'll say that leave mesh alone density we'll have on 20 sorry mesh, density we'll have on 25 radius 210 minimum we'll have 0.5 maximum 1.35 We'll leave that alone, leave all this alone. We don't want it to cast shadows because that'll just have a serious impact on performance. Uh, if you have got lo lots of instances placed and you're not using occlusion, we'll have cast shadow off. And since we want to be able to walk, the player wants to walk through it and the pawns and what whatever wants to walk and what else, we'll go ahead and set and make sure it's on no collision. It is by default on no collision. And then down here, since it's an unimportant mesh and it's small and it's not hasn't got as many triangles as the tree and it's not that much of a complicated mesh, we can make sure enable density scaling is highlighted, is checked. I think there's just one more set I want to. I think I'm missing something. Let's just go ahead and place it down. Make sure it's checked or it won't happen. Make sure. I as you can see, it's not placed anything down. Uh, I've still got tree selected. Unselect that. Um, there you go, now fern selected. That's why it wasn't putting it down. There you go. It puts it down. If we get closer to him, there'll be full detail. Because these meshes from Epic Games have got lots on a level of detail. Meaning, basically, there's different model types for, for based on the distance you are far away from the object. So up closer, it'll be log zero, which is the full range of vertices and detail and the further you get away you'll go to log one so it doesn't render as many triangles and the, the mesh isn't quite as detailed because you don't need you can't really see it properly from that range and i think it's got a log two which is even further away it renders even less triangles <coughs> so now what we want to do select tree select rock make sure fern selected and grass now when we paint it will paint all those objects at the same time, the ones we've got selected, we've selected all four. If we go ahead and paint like that, as you can see, it saves time. Just now, we set up the individual properties. We shouldn't have a problem. Everything should be nicely spaced apart, so we can just and there you go. That is terrain painting. Just give me an engine second to unfreeze as you can see you've now got foliage if we go ahead and right click and choose play from here we'll play from that spot pot, spot we just chosen we'll go into the game we're just a camera a loose camera flying around at the moment but we can go across obviously you can spend a lot of time on this and get it just the way you want to I'm just doing it quickly for, uh, for tutorial purposes but as you can see it looks pretty good well that's it for today's tutorial YouTube if you've liked what you've seen or it's been useful at all please comment like and subscribe thank you very much for watching and have a great we'll hear it, John.